Well, the, the importance of it, uh, Mac is a person who wouldn't want to have a memorial to him, just him, not, not a, a statue of, of just a person because he served in these offices. Uh, he was much more than that. He was quite a humble individual, and, and the memorial itself represents the life of the individual and the inspiration uh, that he provides all of us for, for the efforts and the hard work that he did to try to make Arizona and our nation a better place. I think the thing that most inspired us was Mac's uh, feeling and understanding for the future, for the growth of Arizona uh, after World War II. And that's why we came up with the idea of using a spiral of organic growth as being the basis for the site plan of the memorial. And the optimism for the future in the uh, soaring uh, triumphal arch here behind us. We're here to honor um, one of our brothers from Pinnell Lodge number 30, Casa Grande, who served Arizona for many years and exemplified what masonry is through his daily life and his work within the community uh, and his, all of his civic activities. We believe that masonry is what he has depicted in his life that of supporting the community, working for, for the benevolence, for mankind. And he is a great supporter, was a great supporter of the veterans, and we also are great supporters of the veterans. We believe in all that he's done, and he's done a tremendous job in building this state into what it is now, a beautiful state to live in. Well, I'm a great admirer of Senator McFarland. I first met him when I was at Arizona Boys State in 1955 when he was governor. And then I worked on a television show with Channel 3 when he was there. And, but I admire him as the person he was. And just as they said here today, this was a man of humble roots, come out of Oklahoma and down to Florence. And um, I, I think, I, and I've said this many, many times, the most important thing to me as a veteran that he did was the he's one of the fathers of the, uh, uh, of the GI Bill, the, the GI Bill Act, which put millions of young people, gave them college educations and, and able to get jobs and other things. That, that the, I think the GI Bill was the most important piece of legislation that uh, this government ever passed, and it's paid him many, many times in return. Well, as uh, as they explained with this, um, this, this memorial is going to affect people differently. It's not like most memorials you see where you've got a statue of somebody looking down at you or or something like that. This this is uh, he, this is just uh, this is about ideas, and McFarland was about ideas. He was a hard working hard working man, and everything he ever everything he ever went for. Uh, he, he gave it. He gave it his all, and this this monument reflects uh, what he has accomplished and what he did in, in his life. And it was a life well lived. Literally, in 1950, Mac, uh, Ernest McFarland, and his family were wonderful supporters of Central United Methodist Church. And so I'm here today, really, to represent the church on the family's behalf and and to remember um, Mac and the contributions that he brought. Uh, he is remembered very fondly and very well amongst the members of my church because of his humility and his compassion and I think we could say his role as a servant. And so we're here today to support what is happening at this uh, event and we want to be a part and let people know that he certainly played a vital role at that church, Central Church in downtown Phoenix. The McFarlands have quite a legacy at Central Methodist Church in downtown Phoenix. And there are many people who knew them far better than I did. I've only been at that church for about five years. But I can tell you this, the esteem and the graciousness of this man um, permeates even to today. And we have a wonderful legacy in what is called the Pioneer Chapel which they help to support and develop, and it's on our campus. And in that particular place, we do hundreds of services a year, and largely in measure to their efforts and their contributions. So we have a special place for the McFarlands, for Ernest in particular, in our hearts today. Join with me in prayer. 
Almighty God, whose great commandment is that we shall love our neighbors as ourselves, and who has taught us that we should do to others as we would have them do to us. We ask your blessing upon our gathering and upon the reason for which we have assembled. We once again acknowledge and celebrate the contributions of your servant, Ernest McFarland. We ask that this memorial that has been established continue to bear witness to his legacy and to his gifts to the people of Arizona. We remember especially on this day in which we celebrate the birth of our state, Ernest's humility, vision, and goodwill for all people. Let this memorial be an enduring reminder of our common goals and actions on behalf of our state and also our nation. Grant us a vision for Arizona that it be a place of fulfillment of your purposes, a state of justice where the needs of the least of these are remembered, a state of economic plenty where greed and poverty shall become a memory, a state of generosity where the needs of the unfortunate are met with abundance, a state where success is founded upon service and each person's dignity, and where honor and virtue is sought and respected, and a state of peace where the American dream will empower the common good. Bless this occasion and this moment as a gift given to bring honor to you, our Creator and Lord of life. Amen. My name is John Lewis. I'm one of the uh, grandchildren of Ernest McFarland. And we, uh, we started this memorial probably, oh, about four and a half years ago. And it was a makeover of an old memorial that fell into disrepair. And anyway, so what we did is we tried to find pieces that could be salvaged from the old memorial. However, we could not. The old memorial was totaled, and so we decided to go ahead and completely raise it and then build and start from scratch, and that's what we did. It's been a long process of building this memorial. We, uh, we, we had to come up with a theme. We had to tell a story. Uh, this uh, memorial does three things. It commemorates my grandfather and it also educates the visitor and it will also challenge um, and motivate the, we hope, the visitor. And uh, we, uh, we had to use lots of artistic icons and uh, write my grandfather's story over and over again and edit it. And we finally got it into 22 informational panels that are back behind the memorial which tells the story of my grandfather from the beginning basically to the end. Uh, my grandfather had three huge offices here in Arizona. He, had, he was a United States Senator, he was uh, the 10th Arizona Governor, and he also was a Supreme Court State of Arizona Supreme Court Judge and was Chief Justice. Uh, Mac. Uh, a lot of politicians have several different offices, but the thing about Mac was what he did when he was in office. He wrote most of the GI Bill, and that allowed millions of people to go to school after World War II. And it, with all the influx of all these veterans going to school, uh, more and more universities were created and and today we have uh, such a a great educational system in universities throughout the nation uh, we have a much better workforce highly educated workforce we have all kinds of products uh, and uh, one of the greatest ways of life today from uh, a lot of the benefits of the GI Bill when my grandfather was governor, he uh, started the state park system. He uh, created tax incentives, which uh, allowed the attraction of uh, high-tech uh, companies, 
uh, to come to Arizona, and then he also um, uh, was a top figure in the water fight with California, and he was uh, he specialized in his private practice of water law, and so he uh, he he just did. Uh, a lot for the state of Arizona. When he was a Supreme Court judge uh, here in Arizona, he uh, he was in the state Supreme Court bench for about six years. And in that six years, he wrote 315 opinions, and that averages out to about 50 opinions a year. And that's unheard of that a justice has done that today. The uh, Supreme Court writes about 20 to 30 opinions a year collectively. And so uh, my grandfather was a very hard worker. Uh, and, you know, it's touching for us, uh, me and my family, that we got this uh, memorial built for him. But I've also noticed old friends and people that knew him and loved him, it means so much to them as well. So this memorial is from the Lewis family, the grandchildren of Ernest McFarland to the people of Arizona. And hopefully for those who come down to Arizona and want to visit, they'll learn a little bit about Arizona history, about my grandfather, about the issues that he fought for and uh, achieved. And it will uh, uh, just uh, help educate and inspire others. Uh, using the life of Ernest McFarland. Uh, now I'm going to do the introductions to my family, and uh, <coughs> most of us are all here. My uh, my sister Kara is here. <laughs> Caught her a little early here. Uh, would you please stand up and wave to everyone? That's what I'm going to make everybody do. And, Kara's husband is here as well, Fritz Aspie. Okay. Um, my older brother, Bill, is here. Younger sister, Leah. Leah's husband, uh, Jim, is here. Leah has um, four children. We have Austin. Austin, can you stand up, please? Okay. okay. And then we have Haley. Haley's over here. Preston. And then there's Julia. There we go. My younger brother. Del Jr. is here. His wife, Heather. His son, Jared. And his daughter, McKenna. There you've just met all of us grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Christopher. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Christopher. This is Kara's son, Christopher, and his newlywed wife, Katie. Okay. Um, we, um, as a lot of people know, there was another memorial here, and it fell into disrepair. We, um, my, my father had retired and kind of taken a step back from things. My mother had passed away in 2003. And so we finally uh, got the message from the state that, you know, something needed to be done with the McFarland Memorial. And we, um, we, we got together. It, it took some time. But I didn't know it. I didn't know where to start and whatever. We went to this other, um, th this other project that my grandfather had put together <laughs> down in Florence called the McFarland um, State Park. And uh, there was a guy there that was kind of spearheading the McFarland um, Memorial, or no, it's the McFarland State Park Advisory Committee. And 
This fella had worked in our grape vineyards with us. He's worked in the um, grape sales. We'd known him, we'd known each other since we were kids. He knew, knows all of us. And little did I know that this guy was going to go to ASU, uh, end up with a master's degree in history, become an Arizona historian. He has his own company, and he um, he was helping us. He's probably the by far the forerunner on uh, the authority on Ernest McFarland. And I asked this guy, Vince, um, you know, we got a problem up in Phoenix, and what can we do? And and so we started with Vince, and, um, well, we'll get into that as the program goes on. But I'd like to introduce to you our um, historian that did a lot of the research, or all the research, uh, a lot of the writing, most of the writing, and he um, uh, helped us get a lot of this, all this, the words that you see back here, vetted through AHAC, which is the Arizona Historical Advisory Committee. And so, anyway, Vince is going to come up and um, give us a few words. Thank you. As John pointed out, it is kind of ironic. Uh, one of the first jobs I had actually was working out on a farm uh, for the McFarland and Lewis family, and uh, my job was picking okra. Which, uh, if you've ever had to do that, that's miserable work, miserable work. Uh, we had two rows of okra. By the time you got done with the second row, the first one was ready to pick again. So it was uh, my, my first experience with job security as well. You know, we, we got started on this project of, and you know, coming out and, and looking at the memorial and, and seeing what they were doing and, and then looking into to really uh, what was the, the vision that we, we had to see about MAC. Um, and really getting intimate with Mac and, and looking for all the things he'd been written, the things that uh, people had written about him, uh, the relationships that he had with people, we really came to the understanding that Mac would not want a memorial to Mac because he was too humble for that. And he certainly wouldn't want a memorial that would reflect the, the one thing that everybody thinks about Mac, which is that he held these three highest offices, that he was a, a Chief of Justice of the Supreme Court, a Majority Leader for the United States Senate, and Arizona Governor. Because that's not his legacy. His legacy is what he did when he was within those, uh, working those positions. Now, a lot of people know that as a United States Senator, Mac uh, was one of the fathers of the GI Bill. His, his part of the GI Bill that he wrote was basically the education and uh, loan benefits uh, for, for uh, small business loans and for home loans. These were opportunities that people did not easily get back then, and Mac saw that there was an issue of 12 million uh, service people coming back from World War II, and they're going to be going back to the same thing that they had before. They're going to be left with the same thing that they had before, and he envisioned that what would happen if they came back to that without any jobs, without any future, we would go right back into a depression. So he puts together this part of the bill so that when these guys do come back, they have opportunities, and these opportunities allow people that were smart enough and capable enough to go to college and to improve themselves and to, to move up the economic ladder because that's what he envisioned. But like many of the things he did, he didn't envision the, the far-reaching results that would be from that because not only did they move up the economic ladder, their children moved up that economic ladder. They also reaped the benefits from that. And their grandchildren did the same. And now, for the next generation, their great-grandchildren. As governor, people talk about, well, you know, he was one of the great Democrats. But actually, Mac, even when he was a senator, he liked to cross the aisle. He liked to work with both sides of the party. And he was actually a fiscal conservative while being a social liberal. When he first came into office, he actually reduced expenditures. He actually cut the budget of the Board of Regents. Now, you say something like that nowadays, and people are freaking out. Oh, my God, they're going to raise tuition, you know? But no, he figured out ways that he could streamline some of the excesses in government. But at the same time, he also increased the amount of funding that was available for, the, for public schools. Because Mac knew, just like we do, that our children need to have a good education in order for them to reach their true potential. And that's what he was doing. He was trying to make that happen for him, and he was quite effective at doing it. He also put together tax incentives for businesses. Now, you know, I start talking about this stuff, and these are the types of things we hear from politicians now. We're going to fix the education system. We're going to bring new businesses to Arizona. I don't know that they necessarily do that well, but 
These are the things that he talked about doing, but he was doing those as well. And he created tax incentives that would bring new businesses, high-tech businesses to Arizona by reducing the uh, sales tax that they would actually spend in doing business with the federal government. At the time, people said, well, that's, that's like corporate welfare. You're just paying these guys off. But Mac had the vision. He, he knew that once he brought them here, that would have a reciprocal effect. That would basically have these people coming in, building houses, building schools, the, the, the whole support mechanism behind that, the stores, the churches, everything. It's a ripple effect. It paid itself back more than, than you can even imagine. And what it did as well is it brought opportunities to people, again, that didn't have those opportunities, and it expanded those opportunities out to others that didn't have those, creating jobs in the fields of construction, health, and recreation. New opportunities for Arizonans that were here, new opportunities for people who moved to Arizona and wanted to make it their home. Mac was uh, very much a promoter of having a state park system. You know, when he was in office, Arizona, being the, 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 the last of the states, still didn't have a state park system. It was the only one that didn't have one. And Mac saw that there was a need for that. But his real focus was on the need for preservation and protection of our cultural and, and natural resources that are out there. So he helped to make that come through. He was able to get the legislation in so we could have a, a parks commission that they could work on, on purchasing properties and start getting these parks in. What's the reciprocal effect of that? Tourism, bringing tourism dollars in into areas of Arizona where they didn't have those types of funds before. And that created what? New jobs and new opportunities. Now we have 30 plus parks, natural uh, areas within the state park system, which provides jobs for a lot of people in these remote areas that normally wouldn't have anything else except for lower wage uh, agricultural positions. Lastly, as Supreme Court Justice. Now, People have said that you know he, he wrote over 300 opinions when he was uh, a justice in the six years he was there. And, and John and I kind of went round and round on this because they said, well, John, if we're going to say it, it has to be true. So we got all of his opinions. We counted them. There were 315. And on average, he was writing over 50 a year. Now, that, that's impressive. I mean, and, and you would think that, you know, that, that would be the great achievement that we would all want to really kind of focus on. And, and certainly, that left an indelible mark on, on the practice of law within Arizona. But what's more important is why did he do this? Well, to Mac, when he became a Supreme Court Justice, that was his dream. As a, as a young boy, he even said he always wanted to do that, but that was something he never in his life thought he could achieve. That was something that was completely out of reach for him. And not only did he achieve that dream, unlike today where, where the, the Supreme Court justices are appointed by the governor, he was elected to that position because Mac was a public servant. And that was important to him, that the people that he'd been representing, that he'd been helping all along, wanted him to be in that position and wanted him to continue on to serve him. And that's why he worked so hard, and that's why he was able to write all those things. And that's, that's the epitome of this man, that, that he's a public servant. And he accomplished a lot in his life. And it wasn't easy, as you'll see, that he did suffer a lot of personal hardships. And I, I think we can all relate to that, because we all do that. He overcame those hardships and he moved forward. So by looking at Mac's life through this memorial, we all have an opportunity here to be inspired by his actions. Because like Mac, we too can accomplish our dreams through hard work and dedication and helping others as we help ourselves. And like Mac, we too can create opportunities and be an inspiration for others. And that is a legacy that he would truly be proud of. Thank you. This behind me here is not just a building with four walls, a roof, and your basic structure. This is more classified as art. This tells a story. Uh, it's got support from architectural design and uh, icons that support this story. Uh, it just goes on and on. and. Um, we uh, looked around and thought, well, maybe this is the architect coming. This guy kind of looks like Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright. He doesn't no. have a pencil in his ear and his hair's darker. But he came up and he said, okay, guys, yeah, look, uh, you know what? There's a real problem here. Uh, Mac isn't here in the middle. Mac is, he's out there. He's worked in that building. He's worked back over there. And that's why you'll see as you go through everything pointed to the outside when you come here. But anyway, I guess to talk uh, more, more qualified would be 
Uh, it was a father and son team, architect uh, company that we had here. They're great. And it's Don and his son, uh, Eric Ryden of Ryden Architects. So without further ado, we'll have them come up. And give it a, a great afternoon. Thanks for coming out here. I'm so happy to see so many curious people, people who are uh, here to honor Mac and support the family. And they've helped support us too. It's been a wonderful project that we have had all together. Uh, the whole design team and the construction company, uh, Concord, have, have done wonderful work here. So Eric and I had a real challenge with this, uh, with this commission in that, as Vince Murray had said, we're supposed to design a memorial for a man who would want no monument. So what do you do? I mean, everywhere out here, there are monuments to, to people, things, and events. And there are some, some monuments here for ideas. So that's what we focused on. Don't focus on the man, focus on his ideals. And so that's really what got us going uh, with this project. And how we got into the fact that this uh, memorial behind you is not just a stand-up statue of Mac or something like that, but it's an experience for someone to come and enjoy and to be embraced by it. And you'll find out when you walk up there that you will feel Mac embracing you as you, as you approach the center. What we did was create an architectural fanfare for the common man. This is supposed to be as much about you as it is about Mac. And that's why when you look at this place, you see that on the back side of that arch, it's all about learning about Mac. But on this side, there's hardly any mention of it because this is your side. This is where you are sent forth through that gateway to find your own opportunities. So what we've done is worked in dualities of the common man and Mac. And more importantly, as John had mentioned, we looked around us for the context in which we are working. And each of these monuments seems to be self-centered. Mac was not a self-centered person, so he would not have wanted a memorial that was self-centered or introverted or all about him. So we looked for the most important context, which was, to Mac, the veterans, the survivors of those who gave their lives in World War II. Our neighboring monument is the salute to the fallen. That monument, by contrast, is a remembrance of wartime sacrifice. Mac straddled the 20th, 20th century pre-war, the war, and Arizona after the war. And so, to offset the miseries of war, we decided that we would put together a garden about peace. This half is about peacetime optimism. Optimism in a soaring triumphal modernist arch, and Eric's idea of growth in the spiral shape of the floor plan. So those are the two major elements. And with those two major elements in mind, reflecting what Vince had come to us with the narrative of Mac's life, we all, the family, the historian, the architects, got together and realized that there are three major parts. You watch for these when you walk through. In those things, you are going to see that justice was Mac's American dream. Law was his path, and opportunity is his legacy. After you walk through here, you will come to a spot in the experience where you will be challenged. You will be asked, what is your 
victory. What is your path? And most importantly, what will be your legacy? So, this place is filled with signs. It's filled with symbols. The signs I've just told you about. It's a sign. A sign is something that means exactly something. But symbols are different to all of us. And you are going to be challenged to see what symbols and meanings you find in all you see. Be aware of all the angles that look around at different things around you, not just in front of you at your face level. And see how they relate to your own life. You should be able to find your life journey here in this path as well. So, I want to take the moment here at the memorial to express our heartfelt gratitude to, uh, to the Lewises for uh, having us commissioned here to make, uh, make a difference in the lives of our community. And um, tell you that working through you and through the spirit of Grampy Mac, that we, uh, we really had a most enjoyable and significant experience in our personal and professional lives. So you let us meet our full potential as architects, and for that we thank you. Eric's going to talk to us now a little bit about what this meant to him in uh, his own uh, world of profession and, and life. Uh, happy Fayhood Day and Happy Macmorial Day. Um, I just want to thank the Lewis family for this opportunity. This has been quite an adventure and a learning experience. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Concord. Uh, learned a lot from you guys. And uh, getting us through the finishing line, it was, it was quite awesome. I want to thank Rouser Concrete. Watching these guys work every day in the mud, working through the storm, working through challenge after challenge of design work. They probably cursed my name many times. And, um, but to see how this thing was built, um, the love that went into this building uh, and structure was incredible throughout the whole journey. So uh, for me, it's been a, um, a better understanding of what love is between a grandson and a grandfather, a father and a son. And um, so I hope that when you experience it, you see the craftsmanship, you see the hard work, you see how um, uh, much passion we put into the project uh, for your experience and um, when you go through it I want you to focus on what you love and what matters to you and then how you plan to share that with everybody else as you go off into the world because it's about love so happy Valentine's Day everyone yeah. and um, that thank you all we had to really run through a lot of hurdles to get this thing done through several different um, governmental, state governmental agencies. And uh, we had one person who was extremely helpful. And she is the um, general manager of building and planning <coughs> services of the Arizona Department of Administration. And without NOLA's help, um, going through and steering through all this stuff was just really next to impossible. So uh, NOLA, could you come up? Department of Administration, I am pleased to accept your dedication of the McFarland Memorial to the people of Arizona. And I couldn't be more pleased with the outcome. And it was very challenging, but it was a very positive experience, so thank you. Um, John Lewis, Don and Eric Ryden, the creative types <laughs> that you were talking about, <laughs> and Concord Construction. And then my own um, DOA staff have been very gracious and responsive partners in this collaborative <coughs> endeavor. So thank you. Thank you.